Supernatural. The record on the whole is probably my favorite record that we've ever done. For the first time, DC Talk, we're working together from start to finish to try and do a record as a collaborative effort. We'd written songs together in the past, but it was like, okay, I got the first verse and the second verse, I need a bridge. You want to you wanna try to do something tonight? But this time we sat under one roof and said, let's write. I really felt creating a supernatural that we were actually a band. We got the cream of the crop, and I, I think it stretched us. But beyond stretching us, we earned respect for each other. It wasn't just three personalities making music together. This was more of a band effort, and I liked it. I think we surprised each other in what we were capable of on an artistic level. It was a great process.
Supernatural tour was tough for me. When I stay home for six or eight months and I'm in the studio, I'm dying for the road. I always tease Toby about that because he's like, sometimes he'd rather be home, but then when he's home, he wants to be on the road again. But when I'm out there on the road, I definitely want to get home. I went through a thing on this tour where I was just like, wow, I mean, you're a normal person now. You, you have a family to go home to. About two weeks into it, I remember thinking, this is my favorite tour we've ever done. We're just doing a good solid show, and um, it's about the music. There's an intensity level in the lyrics in this record that was, was intense, but still a little more subtle than Jesus Freak. This time we chose to just let the word speak for itself. We kept it that simple. And I think from that standpoint, it was a tour that touched more people spiritually than any I've ever been involved with. And I think it was because we let God speak for us. But I want you to know Together, baby. 
In the early days, DC Talk. Radio didn't really accept us. Y'all ready for some old school DC Talk Detroit? We made a name for ourselves working on the road, doing shows. So our show had to be great. Okay, I need some help out there. You got my back? Now when I say I, y'all say I, 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 I. When I say gotta make, y'all say gotta make, gotta make, gotta make. When I say I, I, y'all say I, I, When I say gotta make, y'all say gotta make, gotta make, gotta make. Motown. Go rapping for the king with the sting in my voice. Back at the men and women, we're relaying the truth. Playground is the sound that I'm talking of. An opportunity to a different love. Golf's definitely special to me because I guess maybe because my dad taught me how to play. And it's a very intricate game. This is Nancy, and she's a, a master golf instructor. It's a very complex game. But he's a very good feel, touch player. He knows where the club is, he knows what he wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> he shoots really, really well. He I, plays very, very Great good. swing. Yeah, great golf, beautiful golf swing. I'm so deep into it that I'm even into course design. Off the sunset, it's a beautiful thing. I got something for you, man. Go to records. It was something that Joey, Todd, and I dreamed of, and when we met out of Eden, we produced their record. didn't intend to have a record company. We really didn't. Taking my experience of being on the road for 10 years and sharing that with other artists, helping them to fulfill the vision that they have, that is awesome. Can't nobody tell you everything is up The biggest change has obviously been the fact that I have a new being in my life. <laughs> this is my son, Truett. Everything just seems to change. Everything shifts back at least one space. Well, we're having a little pool party today, as you can see. I see traits of Amanda in him, and you know, his mom is the bomb. <laughs> I mean, and it's like, I know he's going to have great qualities because she has great qualities. He wakes up, he's like the happiest person in the world. And I see him like pull himself up over his crib and he's just smiling. I mean, he's like, I mean, he just, he's just so happy that he's awake and there are things to look at in front of him. It totally blows my mind and it makes me think that's how I should look at life. Amanda went to the doctor, we found out she was gonna have the baby earlier than her original due date. And we had a video scheduled then for my friend so long in Toronto. So um, we had to end up changing the video location from Toronto to Nashville so that I could be here for when my first child was born. Really the song comes from Michael, Kevin and I and conversations we've had. Sitting on the bus talking about what if one of us left took off in the mainstream, became this major pop icon. It's not even dealing with what he did as much as it's dealing with the feelings of the other two left behind and resolving with the fact that we still love him, we still care about him. He's still our friend, but so long.
heard your record on the telephone It was my cousin Joan She picked it up in the top 40 rock and then I read your interview in Rolling Stone You threw the boys a bone And so I genuinely felt obliged to call I know you never meant to hurt us, man We're just a baby band You found a quicker way to scale the wall of Singing live is wonderful because when you've got an audience, it's different when you're in a studio because when you're in a studio, you have to be inspired by memory or inspired by the words or you have to, you have to actually think of things that inspire you when you're creating. But when you're live in front of people, um, inspiration is found in the faces of people and, 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 and uh, the different cities that you're in. Alas, my love, you tell me wrong So cast me off discourteously I have waged both love and land Delighting in 
her company. Greece at least was my heart of joy. Green sleeves, my heart of pain. Green I love creating, even when I'm on stage. I, I don't like doing something the same every night. And who but my lady? You've got your instrument, and that's it. And you gotta, you gotta make the most of your instrument. This, this is Christ, the King, whom shepherds watch. Son of Mary, the babe, the son of Mary. Kevin Max, and this is the tour of uh, the Kevin and, El and Elena Max household. And Elena is my wife, just just in case you didn't know that. This is my lovely wife, my little buddy, Elena Joe. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I like to come out, hang out, have a cup of coffee. Although now I'm kind of edging toward more of a modern landscape. That's the shed um, where I actually, this, this was a garage, but right now it's just a shed. The biggest dog recorded on the face of the planet, Tully. That dog lives for Kevin. <laughs> I like working out in the in the yard for some reason. It's, it's become a personal fascination. I love to watch really, really bad B movies that come on at two in the morning. I can watch like 70s cop movies, you know, until six, till, till the sun comes up. The dumbest movie will come on TV and I'm like, for like five hours. Anyways, uh, this is our guest bedroom. Come with me over here, I'll show you the uh, guest bath. This is the bathroom that you get. Shower. You know, I realized that on uh, on documentaries on rock and roll, people or musicians, they usually don't want to show their master bedroom. But I'm just like, you know, whatever with that. We've done this room a little bit more modern. I feel very mortal in this chair. You know, when I get in this chair, I, I kind of tell my wife everything. We had to convert almost a whole bedroom into Kevin's closet because he's got some. Wait, issues wait, no. with wait, clothing. Wait, you can't, you can't show that. Why? That's one like thing I want to keep mysterious. For rock and roll purposes, I just I I, I, don't, I don't like to show what I got in there. Just in case some guy wants to go out and try to copy my wardrobe, I want to keep it all like. There you know. is no way if they spent 20 minutes in there that they could even fish through all of the clothes you have in there. You know he has the women's side because it's the larger side, and I have the male side. The phone's for you. Why don't you go down and get nope, it? Nope. This is the. Come on, baby. <laughs> After having this background for two weeks. <laughs> Is now wallpapering with fabric over the whole thing. <laughs> this fabric is lovely, isn't it? We think it'll make a nice change. My wife is a bit neurotic. <laughs> it's hard to explain. You know, she's a very, very intricate person. I mean, uh, I think she's uh, probably the most giving person that I know. And uh, I married, you know, somebody that I look up to more than anybody on this planet. And so to, to know that person was going to be with me for the rest of my life was just, you know, such a joyous occasion. She's my other self. She completes me. You had me at hello, dear. Yeah, she is, she is like the whole package. Basically, Audra is Elena's twin sister. My twin sister and I started a group. This is Audra, and this is me. So we look very much alike. They're twins.
We love to harmonize, we love to write together, and I think we j it just naturally happens. Right We're very secretive about Andre and Elena because we don't want too much to be spoken by, by the bias, you know, half of Elena. We want people to go experience the music themselves. If you go out, listen to Audra Elena, go out and get a CD, you'll be hooked. I'm kind of a hopeless romantic, and that's why I write poetry. Right now, I'm actually finished the second book of poetry, tentatively titled Venus Was a Tramp, and, you know, compared to the love of my life, Venus had it all wrong, you know. Venus, as the love goddess, is nothing compared to my wife. Was that the end of my road? I had no Go, go. To go. Was at the end of my rope. I had nothing to show Ooh. until the day that I turned to you. Was at the end of my. Since I met you, I've been alright. You turn on my dark face into light. And since I met you, I've been okay. I've been alright. You know I've been alright. And since I met you, I've been okay. You're rolling my winter into May. And since I met you, I've been alright. I've been okay. Since I met you, I've been okay. Since I met you, come on. You got me feeling like a million bucks. Some people write it off as Irish luck But I know better cause my rabbit's foot never did Be a real good The truth that hit me like a sock in the eye A revelation that I can't deny Your love is overtaking every little part of me You were what I needed I'm carried away You never seen the sunshine light Since I met you, I've been alright. You turn on my darkness into light. And since I met you, I've been okay. I've been alright. And since I met you, I've been okay. You're rolling my winter into May. And since I met you, I've been alright. I've been okay since I met you. I don't know about you, but I'm a little mentally disturbed. Yep. Was at the end of my road. I have nowhere to go. Was at the end of my road. I had nothing to show. To the day that I zip zip pow. Was at the end of my
studios. There are different outlets. You can write for an artist, you can produce an artist, you can write for yourself, produce yourself. But for me, I've never been into writing for other people as much as I have been lately. I mean, any producing, and it's just passion for me. Pete Stewart, for instance. Pete Stewart was in Grandma Train. He went solo, and Eddie DeGarmo asked me to be a part of a project for Pete, maybe a couple of songs. Well, a couple of songs ended up being 11 songs. In the very end, I stopped and I thought to myself, what am I doing? And then I thought, well, this is what I love to do. You know, even though it's not for me, it's not for my record, when I'm passionate about something, I enjoy working with people on that level. Hope and praying, I've been waiting. Everybody needs somebody to love. There's no question, straight from heaven. You're my angel, I'm so crazy for you. You're a godsend, a blessing from above. You've been godsend to me. Baby, you're a godsend, you know I've been dreaming of. You're a godsend. Ooh, 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 ah. So I feel like now is the perfect opportunity to tell the people that support me, that support DC Talk, exactly what's going on. And that is, I am currently without a girlfriend. <laughs> but I have been blessed with lots of family members and lots of friends. Uh, my dad always says, he used to always tell me, if it's the Lord's will, we shall do this and we shall do that. So if it's the Lord's will, maybe by the next time we make a long form video, uh, that, that rainbow will be a little closer, maybe even in my uh, on my finger or by my side or something, I don't know. A blessing from above, you've been God sent to me. Maybe you're a God sent, you know I've been dreaming of. You're a God sent. I have fun with it sometimes, just to make you laugh. My dad was a very unusual black man, he really was. Uh, we were a little different because my dad was an unusual black man. I always say that if any man had a right to be racist, then it would be my dad. Growing up in the South, in Alabama, it was tough. The clans, I guess, killed my granddaddy. 
but we never got bitter. We never cared over anything in our hearts. We was just taught to love people and get along. This hate stuff, it's for the birds. It's not for the human being. And I were determined by God's grace to teach my children love. He raised us and instilled in us the values that we have today. Just think, all these different nationalities uh, that God have created, that's God's bouquet. And he loves us all. John 3, 16 says, For God to love the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that has nothing to do with your nationality. And I believe. The Lord took him home last year after about a two or three month illness. It was very hard on our family. I came home the day he died. I remember being in this very room I'm sitting in right now. I was in this room and I called my mom and I said, how's dad doing? She goes, well, he's, he's still here. And she was sitting bedside. And then my dad starts, you know, uh, convulsing and my mom gave the phone to my cousin Sheila and she goes, I think, you know, dad's going, I think he's dying. And I was thinking to myself, he can't be, you know, cause God knew I wanted to be there, but if he could talk, he would say, go back to work, do what you do, you know? So the doctors and nurses come in and say to my mom, he's leaving us, say goodbye to your husband. And my mom starts wailing and crying. I'm just freaking, I'm thinking there's no way my dad is gonna die while I'm on the phone talking to him. And sure enough, that, that eight minutes into the conversation, I called, he was alive, I hung up, he was gone. And I look at that and I say, God honored my request, even though I wasn't there in person. My dad knew I was on the phone, because here we talked to my mom. And he left and it was, it was quite a day, I'll never forget it. And I thought, I could have called one minute before and hung up early and he'd have died after I called. Or I could have called after he died. I mean, I called that very moment, within that eight minute time span, he went to be with the Lord. And that is a mystery. Yeah. Don't your black study haunted me, for I am 
to give up the rights to myself the bits and the pieces I've gathered as well could never compare to the joy that you bring me the peace that you show me is the strength that I need and it's my Consume Me was the most memorable video to me that we've ever made because it was so cold that I could not even feel my lips. We were about five stories up and the wind that you see in the video isn't a fan. I mean, it's the real thing. And we were like being hit with like this really icy cold wind and having to lip sync, you know, to the music. It was just no fun. And for the first time in the history of DC Talk, I was involved in a video that was something that I would do if I was a video director.
The Erase Foundation for DC Talk was as natural as breathing. Eliminating racism and creating equality. Living integrated, it's so obvious. Toby, Kevin, and myself, we are living integration. You know, it's just, it's every day, it's the way it is. What blows my mind is when I travel around the United States and you find people that don't get that. We think because we don't see it maybe right out today and we think that it's gone, but it's very much a lot, very much so in America. And we'd be naive and even more ignorant to think that it's actually gone. The Erase Foundation was sort of the next step to do something tangible. If I could talk to white America, I'll say this. We've got to stop being apathetic. Our forefathers did something very wrong. And we need to recognize that and confess that and seek forgiveness from African Americans. I really believe that's true. I know that's not the most popular thing to say. And I know you can sit there and say, you know what, we didn't do it. Our forefathers did, and we bear the burdens of their sins. So to black America, I say forgive me and forgive my, my, my heritage. And obviously being the uh, African American up on the stage here in DC Talk, black America needs to be able to say, we, for, we accept your forgiveness, we need to move on. The greatest travesty is if we repeat the ignorance of our our ancestors. We need to move forward. This is a new generation. We believe in equality. We believe in unity. If I could say one thing to the world, I would say, leave your comfort zone for a couple of hours. You know, try getting to know your neighbor. They're humans, and they're, and they're in comfort zones also. But as Christians, we're called to go beyond and to go out of our zones and to go into the world where they are, get to know people.
looking forward to the Jesus Freaks book that DC Talk has coming out. Well, we take the term Jesus Freak and it means an ardent enthusiast, someone that is enthusiastic about Jesus. This book sort of takes it to a new level. It's kind of like the, a modern day version of the Fox's Book of Martyrs. I've always wanted to be a part of something like that where it's talking about actual people that have been persecuted for their faith. And, actually are martyrs. These are the ultimate Jesus freaks, people that died because of their faith in Christ. If you like DC Talk or don't like DC Talk, it doesn't matter. It stands on its own. It's not about us. It's using our platform to shed light on some people that deserve a spotlight, people that are being persecuted in the name of Jesus or have been, and people that have been murdered. It's a great book. It's just a great piece of history. Those people had to die for the faith, and all we really have to do is live for ours.
There is love in the red letter. One Wednesday night, I remember it was raining and storming outside. I couldn't sleep, so I come downstairs with my uh, to my guitar, and it started really simple because my skills, once again, are very simple, very plain. But um, I was just sitting around. And I was doing a little something like. To providence, it goes beyond religion. Yeah. 
Sorry. 
Sometimes.